Won't you join me? Hey guys, this is Carlos Phoenix um, with PhilHoundsNetwork.com, and I have a great special guest. Uh, this is going to be um, a treat for me because I, I had interviewed him just about a year ago, and uh, and we had a lot of fun on that interview, and we're bringing him back today, uh, director and, of, of horror and comedy and sci-fi, uh, Joe Menendez. Joe, thank you so much for joining me again. Of course, of course, my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. And so you're in uh, Miami Beach, Florida, yep. right now. Although I think you're normally in LA. That's right. That's right. I'm in my mom's house in Miami. So. Very cool. And so uh, yeah. today, your episode that you directed of Siren is coming on. But before we yep. get into that, uh, let's just do a little catching up. About a year ago, yep. we had spoken. Uh, we went over. You know, you were going to be uh, with the Georgia Latino Film Festival. We got to see your film, uh, which was fantastic, uh, Ladrones con Ladrones. And um, what, what, what projects have you worked since then? I know you were starting to work on some projects. You had a producer there, I think, if I remember correctly, a yeah. uh, beautiful yeah. young lady. And so, yeah. so can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since then? Well, when I saw you last, um, I was um, in Atlanta uh, doing a movie uh, for Lifetime, Uh Right now, the title is tentatively called uh, uh, Murder with a Twist, uh, and it's a uh, murder mystery uh, type movie. Uh, it's about a woman she's a, uh, who's a teacher. Uh, she's sort of very straight-laced, you know, uh, doesn't do anything uh, sort of, you know, dangerous in her own life. She, you know, she teaches, she, you know, she loves to read dangerous stories, but would never do anything dangerous in her own life, and uh, gets a phone call one day, tragically, that her sister... Uh, committed suicide. So she goes home uh, for the service, and then while she's home, she finds a series of clues that, that, that suggest that perhaps her sister was murdered and didn't commit suicide. And her sister worked uh, as a bottle girl uh, in, a, you know, in a nightclub in Atlanta. And so this woman, this teacher who has never done anything dangerous in her life, goes sort of undercover, if you will, uh, into this nightclub, into this seedy sort of underbelly of nightlife to sort of uh, get close to the people that were close to her sister to discover or to figure out whether or not she was in fact murdered. And so by doing so, she puts herself in terrible uh, danger. And so, but it's a, uh, so it's, there's a ton of twists and turns and there's all this uh, 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 kind of cool stuff that happens. But um, I love the movie, uh, the, uh, the the script because it's uh, it was it, I had never done anything like it. Uh, it you know it was uh, it was a thriller which I had never done before, uh, and it was uh, a very feminine story which I loved and I had never done before either. So um, you know I sort of gave it uh, w without giving away too much. I sort of gave it a a a sort of Hollywood twist, so that you know it's because uh, you know it, when you're dealing with you know this world. You know the bottle service, the bottle service industry, and the script sort of delved uh, deep into what happens at not all these clubs, but at some uh, with human trafficking and things like that. And so you know it got really dark. And like so, so the first draft that I read was incredibly dark, and 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 like it was like icky. You know when I read it, I I wanted to take a shower. I was like, oh god, it's just so you know. But you know it's stuff that goes on. So uh, I didn't get away from any of that, but. Um, I made it something so that uh, all audiences can watch it and sort of, you know, uh, you know, for a lifetime audience is, is kind of the way I look at it. And uh, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's uh, um, it, it, no premiere date as of yet, but it's looking like fall of this year is when it's going to come out. Awesome. Now, you mentioned that it's different for you. Now, how is it different? Like, I know you do sci-fi, you know you do horror, you do a bunch of different... Mm -hmm. Uh, stuff yeah. that I, for me would be very different. How is yeah. a thriller different than these other other categories? Well, I didn't have the uh, the, the the fallback of sort of genre uh, of genre, you know. So uh, a lot of it was really dependent on me crafting performances and 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 having it be characters that you cared about, uh, and then it's goosing tension and suspense and bringing a little bit of that Hitchcock kind of stuff, you know, so it's more about suspense, it's more about mood, uh, it's about tension, uh, you know, and you have moments, there's moments of action in it, uh, but it's really about ratcheting up 
the suspense and really making you, you know, uh, you know, fear for the life of this character. Uh, yeah, and she's uh, she's played by Kate Mancy, who won an Emmy for uh, Days of Our Lives, and she did a spectacular job. All the all the actors in on the, in this movie did a great job. But uh, but it was you know finding finding truth and finding you know opportunities to really uh, goose the suspension and really you know get you what you want with these kind of movies is. Uh, you know, to be you know concerned that at any moment something terrible is going to happen to this person. You know, you wanted to put an ordinary person in this extraordinary situation. So, to me, as a filmmaker, I love that as an exercise because I didn't have uh, the the usual uh, uh, fallbacks that I that I could you know like eventually there'll be a chase scene, eventually there'll be a, a, a visual effect scene. It was all about performance and getting and the, the tension right. And characters all of that and so to me that was incredibly enjoyable and I, and I enjoy doing it and so we're actually I'm actually uh, working on another one now uh, um, which uh, another thriller uh, so so That's maybe cool. I found a new calling maybe I found a new calling maybe this is what I'm gonna start doing now. but I think as a as a filmmaker I think I think I just enjoy uh, telling a wide variety of stories so for me I don't look I I mean even though when you're doing a thriller that comes with certain uh um you know sort of uh benchmarks that you want to hit and you sort of know like okay this is the kind of movie it's going to be and you want to totally get that right but as a director i look and any director would, would say this you you look at every script a, a, as an individual story and we want to tell that story uh, now the tools that you use are dependent on the genre if you're doing a comedy i wouldn't do there's certain things i wouldn't do in a comedy that i would do in a episode of siren for instance uh, so you know, there's so there's like things that you go can't do that here, can do that there, but you know because as storytellers we just want to tell the story, and so to me the scripts dictate how the stories are shot and how it's blocked and how it's staged. Uh, but uh, but it was exciting because I had never done something like that, so it was fun to see that kind of stuff come together. Now uh, I don't know if you answered this last time, um, so I'll ask again. So I'll ask do, you, do you use storyboards? Do you use storyboards? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. I wanted to be I wanted to be a Disney animator uh, when I was a kid. <laughs> So, um, uh, so yeah, no, I draw, I draw, you know, they're very cartoony, my drawings. So I, I, I would have never made it as a professional storyboard artist, but they get the, uh, the idea across, you know, in, in a way that's very clear. I'm told that it's, they could just be like, oh, good Joe, you know, but, it, <laughs> but, but I, but it seems like everybody understands. Like when I go to, you know, uh, I was just doing something in Vancouver. Um, last month, and um, we had this whole chase sequence, and um, I drew it out. I drew it out myself, and you know, you sit there and you with all these seasoned stunt people. You know, all the same people that did the Deadpool movies were doing this stunt sequence, and they all understood it. And the sequence, it's you know, you know, when that episode comes out, I may, I may do a side by side comparison, you know, of the storyboards and the sequence <laughs> be because fun. it's actually. It's actually pretty close. Like it's um, oh wow, look at that. And then, and in fact, the episode tonight that is airing of Siren, the opening sequence. I don't want to give away what the opening sequence is, but the opening sequence of the movie is uh, it, it it like grabs you right right from the beginning. It grabs you like the it's a it's a pretty cool opening sequence, and I drew it out frame by frame. And so uh, when when this when it comes out, I may do that. I may. For the opening scene of my episode of Siren Tonight, I may put the storyboard and the secret side by side uh, because it's almost identical to how I drew. There's a few things that we didn't do, uh, but by and large, it's almost identical. So clearly, cool. people are understanding my. Understanding oh yeah, well, because I used to I used to do storyboards, and yeah, uh, I know I, that. I know for uh, I tried to do my own side by side comparison. Now, is your headphones yeah. plugged in? Because I hear an echo. Oh, how about that? Is that better? Testing. How about that? Testing. How about now? Yeah, I still hear Am I echoing? Oh, boy. Well, I got my big Bose headphones that I could switch over to. Should well, I is, there, is the speakers on the computer playing? No. Oh, interesting. Okay. This is live, live Facebook. This is, do you want no, me to switch over? <laughs> I'll, do it, right. I'll do it live on Facebook. No, it's all right. Well, um, all, right. all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a, a couple of clips of some of the stuff that you've worked on yeah. uh, and let, let people get an idea of the quality of your work. All right. Okay. 
<laughs> Usually there's more uh, uh, image, <laughs> more anime. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a minimalist with a black screen. You know. <laughs> All right. What I'll do is I'll try to refresh that, and then I'll, I'll play it in a moment. Okay. See, you never know what like, happens with live. Live just kind of yeah, messes you up sometimes. People are going to watch it and go, Joe doesn't really... Well, he's really good. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's minimal. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Don't you worry. You and I are gonna butch and Sundance our way right through this town, come out the other side. You do know they both died, right? Freeze framed. They freeze framed. Those guys live forever. So I'm lowering the sound. Uh, yeah. What I love is that you get an opportunity to play. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. It's one There's thing to direct a film, but it's another to yeah. be able to kind of, you know, like we, we're we're living in the world of comic books and Avengers and all that type of stuff. And you know, when I was young and reading those books, you you kind of just try to imagine what it would be like in real life. And we're living in that world now, and it's cool to see you know some of these effects and stuff. Um, yeah being able to just bring it to reality so what does that feel like for you when you first start working on a project and then you see it with the effects yeah well it, it uh i was having a conversation the other day with a uh with a um a filmmaker friend and um i told her that uh you know there's a the, you know the, 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 you know you have to ask yourself why you do the things you do and why you know uh you know it, it's and, and you can't just say why i do it because i want to get paid oh i do it because i want to get rich <laughs> well that's not that's not a that's not the that's not a real why that's you know certainly everybody wants to make money and everybody wants to do well but the why has to be something a bit more um uh dare i say internal um and for me it's uh i do it i do it there are moments that i plan and I, you know, and I shoot and then I go edit. And there's a moment when all that's done and you're watching it and it comes together. And when it works, it, and, and it doesn't always work <laughs> when it works, there's a moment of bliss is what I call it. It's bliss. So like where you go, wow, that, that worked like I saw it in my head. And, and it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a gratifying feeling that I think, uh, any filmmakers out there that are that are watching would understand, you know, when you had those moments uh, where something worked, and 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 so you live for uh, crafting as many of those moments as you can. You sort of want to keep your batting average up. You know, you wanna you wanna have as many blissful moments where you put together things 
that worked, um, I, I, you know, and, and, and you want that to happen as often as possible. Um, right. And so, and so for me, it's, it's, it's not about, you know, because, you know, you don't, what you never want to do is say, I want to, I want to get there. And when I get there, I'm going to be happy because you're never going to be happy when you get there because then you're like, now what? True, the true happiness is as is the process. You know, you're working and you're having these moments. It's blissful, and then you move on to the next blissful moment. And you don't know that could that could happen on the very next thing you do, or that could, it could be a year before you see something that you go, ah. Oh. And it's these. I, I'm not sure if I'm making any sense, but it's <laughs> it's cre- creating things uh, that work. And when they work, whether it's something with visual effects, like you're saying. Or whether it's something like on you know the the lifetime movie that I did that's all performance and it makes me cry. It, it's it's mm-hmm. you want these blissful moments. So how do I feel when I see these effects? Up? It's like like this scene right here with Wilmer. Uh, you know there was no muzzle flash coming out of those guns, and so it, you know the actors were basically standing there going like this, you know, and so muzzle flash gets added, and then you add bullet hits and you add all that, and when you see it all come together. You have a moment where you're like, "Whoa, oh my God, that totally works!" Yeah. But uh, and then and then it's like a drug because then all you do is work towards doing it again, and and so you look, you, you just go from moment to moment where it all works. So it's incredibly gratifying when it works, mm. and but it's not something that I do alone. I mean, all I could do as a director is point and 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 suggest and say, "How about this? How about this?" And then other artists and collaborators come in, and they're the ones that actually put it all together you know all i could do is tell them what i see in my head and that's what directing is directing is taking this and sharing it with everybody and then guiding and nudging you know until you see the thing that you have in your head or as close to it as you can now did you go straight into directing or did you do something before that no i was one of those man i i got my ass kicked a lot growing up because i wanted to be a you know, I grew up in the projects, so I, I, you know, I didn't, I, I, you know, so I was, I was a, I was a, a rare thing growing up. You know, somebody, especially back in the '80s when I grew up in my in my neighborhood, wanted to make movies. So that's all that I ever want. Like, if this directing thing wouldn't have worked out, I don't know what I would have done. Hmm. And uh, so, but thankfully, it's it's all worked out. Now that doesn't mean that I I didn't have odd jobs. I did, you know, I did all sorts of odd jobs. You know, uh, uh, before I could just make my living as a as a director. But uh, so, but it wasn't like I I came from one career and then switched over. I've always been a director, and you know, whenever I did any, you know, I learned how to edit, I learned how to run camera, I've done all of that. Uh, but that was sort of a means to an end. Uh, it wasn't because you know I was doing that. That was my career, and then I switched. I've always been a director my whole life. And you know what's interesting is, and again, other filmmakers that are on this uh, know what I'm talking about. It's for the longest time, you know, early on in your career. You almost, when you say you're a director, you know, you kind of go, I'm a director, you know, because, you know, when you, when you don't have, you know, sort of body of work that you could really show, because the first thing people ask is when you say you're a director, it's like, oh, what have you done? And right. so then when, when you got to start explaining, then a diaper commercial. Feel, yeah. But, but by the way, if you've done a diaper commercial, you're a director, you know, right. so you shouldn't do that. Like I used to do, I used to do that back in my twenties when I was doing like Spanish television, I, you know, I'd be like, I'm a director. Oh, what have you done? Oh, Spanish television and doing, you know, and now I realize like, but I was a director, you know, so it, 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 I've never, so I've never done anything else. I've always just done this and, uh, thankfully it's worked out and, uh, and, uh, so I couldn't be happier. I'm doing the thing that I've been wanting to do since I was a little kid. Now, before we went live, you mentioned, uh, you, you didn't know if we had talked about Queen of the South, but, uh, but is there something you wanted to bring up about that? No, no, I just didn't. Rem- I just couldn't remember if we had if we had discussed it or not. And uh, it's one of the shows that I did uh, for USA Network. Uh, you know, uh, had a fun time on that show. The cast was amazing. It's a predominantly uh, Latino cast, and you know, which is always something uh, that's exciting. You know, uh, you know, you know, for me uh, to to kind of go Latino, 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 Latino. Ah, wow, this is kind of interesting. You know, so. <laughs> It's, it's always that's always that's always a fun thing, you know, and and and, uh, and you know, but obviously on that series it was also appropriate because it was you know the rise of you know this character that was going to eventually become the leader of this of this uh, this cartel family, and uh, but uh, but that, no, that, I just didn't know if we had talked about it or not in, the, okay. in our last interview. I just wanted to make sure I at least touched base with it. I uh, yes. <laughs> so um, 
Oh, cool. So we, we got a, uh, just a comment. Uh, that's so great that your oh. passion for the work shows through. The, through. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Um, so let me ask you another thing. So well, let's go over a little bit about Siren. So Siren, uh, I started watching it since, since it premiered. Uh, once I knew yeah. that you were working on it, that was my enticement. I was like, okay, let me see what Joe does, you know, uh, yeah. and, and granted, uh, I still haven't seen what Joe does on this show because the episode he, he, he yeah. directed is yeah. today. So 40 minutes, 40 minutes, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Thank you. So let's uh, talk a little bit about Siren. Can you tell us a little bit about the premise of the show as a whole? Well, the show takes place in a, it's, it's a fictional, like a Pacific Northwest, uh, like fishing town called Bristol Cove. And, um, you know, it's, it's a town that has had, uh, you know, the fishermen have had um, interactions with mermaids for generations. And uh, so, uh, but it's not mermaids like Ariel, you know, uh, in the right. little mermaid. It's, these are these are mermaids that that you know that are predatory that that you know that you know they hunt you know they're not aggressive unless you know someone goes after them then they could be because they're when they're on land they're much stronger than humans so um, in the pilot um, uh, a fishing boat is out you know far out you know far out at sea and they capture what they think is a large fish and it turns out that they capture a mermaid uh, in their fishing nets. And almost immediately, and, and there's a sailor who, uh, or, 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 or um, one of the crew members on the boat who gets injured. So when they call it in, instantly the government shows up, realizing that a mermaid's been captured, and they take the mermaid away, uh, and they take it to a, like a secret government lab. And what ends up happening is the sister of that captured mermaid comes onto land to rescue her. And the sister is Rin, and Rin is sort of the lead mermaid played by Aline Powell, uh, brilliantly, I might add. I should say, and, um, we, uh, and I don't mean to interrupt you, a spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those who have not seen the first episode. <laughs> well, that's, but, uh, that's the purpose that's of the, the pilot. And then, and then, yeah, and then, and then so Rin is, is sort of ingratiates herself, uh, uh, you know, with these humans and sort of, you know, they become family in, in a lot of ways. And she learns with each episode to become more and more human. Uh, and this is, a, you know, I guess if you haven't watched, then, you know, go like this. Uh, but by the time it gets to my episode now, they have essentially sent mermaid assassins <laughs> to uh, to come get them, to come get Rin, is what we discover. And um, but it's way more uh, 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 layered than just that. That's sort of what is, you know, the episode tonight is called Street Fight. And there's going to be fighting on the streets of Bristol Cove tonight. And that's but uh, but I love you know what the writers have done with the series and in particular obviously with my script uh because there were twists that i didn't see coming you know because obviously when i got my script i watched um as many episodes as i could and then i read all the scripts so i was so i'm doing the ninth episode so there were eight episodes before mine so i got to read them sort of like a fanboy you know i'm just sort of reading these stories and I'm like oh my god oh my god yeah. and i kind of you, you get to a point where you forget, like, oh, now I have to direct the next chapter. Like, now it's me. And uh, so, so, but it, to me, it was exciting because when episode eight ended, which was a very emotional episode, um, if you haven't seen that, I'm not going to say why. And um, so, you know, for me, when that, you know, like there, were, there was a moment in that episode that while reading the script, I cried, you know, and I was like, oh my God, this is, this is, uh, this is really great. And then, and then, so I was excited when I finally, because I didn't, I didn't read my script until I got through the first eight. I didn't want to read my script. I didn't want to know anything, you know, because I, you know, it's all serialized. So I wanted to know um, where the story was coming from. Uh, and then when I read mine, like I, it was I, a page turner. You know, it was so it was so exciting and thrilling, and I didn't know what was gonna what was gonna happen. And when I got to the end, it was one of those things that I put the script down, and I was like, oh my god, I get to do this one. Holy lord, yeah, this is awesome. You know, so. The moment I got up to Vancouver where we shot it, uh, it was a thrill to, to make uh, because every every day of prep and every day of shooting was an absolute thrill. I mean, you know, there were times that I would sit around and I was like, this is the coolest job. Like, I'm, I'm doing a show about, you know, about mermaids and there's all this cool stuff happening on the streets, which you'll see in about half an hour. Awesome. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, it, it is coming up tonight. And in about yeah, yeah. at least uh, no, yeah, uh, it's not the same time though. Yet, if you're on the West Coast, then of course it's the time. Over oh there. right, yeah, yeah. Sorry, West Coast. Yeah, we're talking about. I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Miami right now, so right. I'm going to see you live 
uh, with my mom. So my mom's cool. excited that I get to see it with her. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to pull up uh, the clip that we can share. Uh, that is your episode, and it's kind of like a little 15-second oh, little... trailer. Little so promo, let me yeah. uh, pull that up, if it works, like the last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hope it's not a black screen. Huh. That's like too quick. Stop. Stop. I know these are these fifteen second promos, man. It's uh, you know, evidently people have uh, short attention span. They got to do fifteen second promos. Watch yeah, this, and, uh, you know? and the other day you had posted something where you show. Now, uh, just out of fun, I think the uh, this post. Well, you know, if you don't mind me sharing that, uh, is that the merman yeah. actor? Yeah, that's uh. So he he was introduced in episode seven. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, he, you know, and, and, uh, came back at the end of last week's episode and, uh, is in this one big time, you know? So now so, from, and, from the post that you had placed, um, his name is Sedale, uh, uh, Sedale, who is a wonderful guy and a terrific actor. And, and there's, uh, uh, there's some stuff that he does in tonight's episode that, you know, again, you talk about those blissful moments. Uh, there's a sequence in tonight's episode that as I was shooting it, I mean, you know, I knew the effect that I, that, that we all wanted the sequence to have. And, uh, and the first time I saw it, it's again, it's one of those moments where you forget it's your episode because you're watching it and you're like, <laughs> well, you know, and then you're like, oh my God, that totally worked. Just, you know, and anyway, so, uh, he's got, he's got a scene like that tonight. You'll know it when you see it. Awesome. Well, you know what? Uh, I th is there anything you want? No. Uh, so you told me that there's a season finale is next week. Next week. That's right. Uh, Nick and, uh, and of course, you know, they're not going to tell us or you uh, who's directing the next season and stuff. Cause they're probably still in the process of creating that. But yeah. is there anything else uh, that you've been interested in working on that you just kind of have your fingers crossed? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you know, you were talking earlier about the, uh, uh, the superhero shows, you know, uh, uh, you know, there's, right, right, right. uh, there's a sound, it sounded terrifying. I don't know what that was, but that was terrifying. <laughs> uh, but, uh, um, the, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the superhero shows, you know, there's a, oh yeah, there's another one. Yeah. There's, there's some spears. That's all I'm going to say there's some spears being thrown. Telling you, and like they're not even spears or harpoons. Yeah, like that's yeah, it's, a lot more weight. It's difference. even like and and holy because like it's what the whalers would actually use to to uh, to kill you know uh, whales, I guess. And uh, <laughs> so we had you know you know we had obviously on set we had you know like the prop ones and all that, but we had real harpoons. And you grab those things, you know, and you start to appreciate what these fishermen, you know, it's it's just they were heavy, you know, and it's like, and, and, you know, they were bottom, you know, especially the, 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 you know, the, the, the tip was really heavy. And so like when you bring that down, you thrust that down. It's, uh, so, uh, the fact that these, uh, mer people, these merfolk can toss these harpoons, uh, uh, it shows how strong they are. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, but anyway, but, uh, you were mentioning, you know, um, you know, superhero shows and, you know, like I love all those things. Like I, you know, I'm a big fan of, of, of all those kind of shows. And so, you know, and, and, but, but also a fan of, um, you know, like a good, like a good procedural, you know, like, you know, like I love, I love those kind of, you know, like, uh, there's a mystery at the beginning of the episode and I got bitten by that bug doing, doing my movie. Uh, you know, that I like the idea of you set up a mystery at the beginning and you get all these clues and, oh, wrong direction. No, it's this way. And by the end of it, you know, you figure out, aha, who, here's who the killer is or, or here's what the twist is. And um, so, which is what a lot of these uh, procedurals do. And, and uh, so I've, I've, uh, I've gotten, you know, where I'm, you know, really interested in those things as well. So, you know, these are all things that I'm working on. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a uh, you know, nothing worth discussing yet, you know, but these are all things that I'm, that I'm working on. Maybe, maybe by uh, next year, I'll be able to come back and talk about some of the other things that, that I'm working on now. 
Well, I can see that the internet is starting to kind of get all choppy. So before we end the episode, um, mm. one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you live in you live in Hollywood, right? I live in LA. Yes. Okay. That's where. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so what? What can you say about Hollywood that helps you kind of uh, get emotionally hyped up to work on the productions that you work on? Is it is it is it an atmospheric thing? When I, on on any particular show, you mean? Yeah. Oh I, well, it's the script. I mean, you know, well, I, I mean, you know, like I, I've got next month. I've got uh, a new episode of Twelve Monkeys coming out that I directed, uh, awesome. and uh, it's one that they go back in time to the old west. Um, so, you know, first of all, I love a show like 12 monkeys because it's a time travel show. So that's exciting. And then you get told like, Oh, by the way, your episode is set in the old West. So you're doing a cowboy episode, you know, I'm like done. Like I, you know, how can you not love that? Uh, so, so it's, it really is, uh, but it really is the script. It's always starts and stops with the script, you know? So the script is what gets me excited and gets me, you know, but like if it's a show that, uh, you know, like. 12 Monkeys or Siren, uh, those kind of shows are, are things that are right in my wheelhouse that I really enjoy doing. But the, it's always the script, though. The script okay. is, you're excited about getting on the show, and it's like that moment of anticipation when the show uh, hands you the script or sends you the script that you read it. That's the moment of, of excitement because that's it. Um, and so uh, hopefully we'll get to see way more episodes with you and Siren. Um, and and I'm, I'm starting to freeze up myself here. So uh, yes. before before the internet kills us. So anyway, well, but anyway, let me let me thank you anyway for uh, being on on the show and uh, for allowing us to kind of poke and prod and ask questions about what you've been doing. And uh, for me, it's always exciting because I don't get to do this stuff. So, yeah. uh, but I you know, but I had my previous history there and, and working on productions, and I kind of miss it. And so talking to you. Just makes me miss it more. It's, a little addictive. It's, it's addictive. It is addictive. It is. You know? It's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work. Uh, hours and hours and hours and weeks and weeks and weeks. But um, but yeah, I mean, when you're not doing it and you're watching it on screen, you're like, oh, I yeah. might have done it differently. Or I can see how they did that. Or, you know, those type of things. Yeah. But cool. Yeah, you give, uh, you, give, you give 10 different directors the same script, you're going to get 10 different movies. Absolutely. We all, Absolutely. See, we all see things different. You know? There's no right or wrong. It's just how you see it. Yeah. So uh, those who are watching uh, and have come back, uh, thank you uh, for joining us again. Um, you know, I'm having a lightning storm behind me. I don't know if that has to do with why we got cut off. But uh, we're going to end it now because the episode is going to start in less than 30 minutes. And I'm going to let yep. Joe kind of warm up with mom and, and sit down in front of the TV and watch it with his mom. I'm going to watch it too. Hopefully you guys will watch it on Freeform uh, and, and enjoy the show. Uh, if you have not been watching the show, the show is Siren, and it's on the Freeform channel. And I just heard another strike. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting and... slammed out here on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you so much again. All right, guys. Of take course, care. Man. Thank you. Bye-bye.